They gave me a little extra time to set up our YouTube channel again. We're broadcasting right now with Evangelist Lena Nita. And um, we've got an awesome time ahead with you. And then later on in the evening, at 11, we're going to have God's Warrior Women. So don't miss it. So uh, right now, we're uh, broadcasting on Channel 1, if you're just joining us, which is 917-889-2745. And Lena, welcome back to the broadcast. How you been since last time? I've been doing great, Brother Shannon. Um, but I can say um, the Lord has got me in a twist all week. And I'm like, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit right now, if that says anything. Well, Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, if you all have been missing the last broadcast we've been doing, you need to go pull them out of the archives because Lena Nita and then we had a broadcast with her sister Karen. They've been bringing a right now word, and um, I really appreciate what you're doing. Lena, without any delay, I'm going to give the mic to you. I want to do one tweak. Pull your mic back just like two inches. I, I got okay. just a little bit of pop. Sound check. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. That's perfect. You got it. The mic is yours. Take it away. Awesome. God bless you all, everyone that's listening in, in um, on the internet, all of you that are listening now through MixLR, and even those that's going to be listening on the um, on the archive. I thank God for you all today, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus as we give Him honor. We give our God, our Father, we give our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give honor to Him. We give honor to His Holy Spirit. And we, we pray right now that, Lord, that you will come in and take control, mighty God. Lord God, to destroy and demolish every force of darkness, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we serve Satan and his kingdom. Notice that every demon that maybe even is, is dropping right now, Lord, that, Lord, you shoot out your arrow and blind them, deaf them, dumb them, paralyze them, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we declare that no weapon formed against myself, Brother Shannon, this message, those people that are listening now and who will be listening later, Father, shall prosper. Lord, you declare in your word that when the enemy comes in a flood, that, Father, you raise up a standard. We declare and decree this night, Father God, even as beseech you, heaven on high, that, Lord, you raise up a wall of standard, a wall of blood, and a wall of Holy Ghost fire. Oh, God, Lord Jesus, that right now, Father, will saturate the airwaves, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Purge through, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, even right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, the transmission lines, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord, loose confusion into the enemy camp that he cannot hear us. Lord, he cannot comprehend. Mighty God, like the Philistines, oh God, as they looked up, Father, looked down upon us, oh God, as we gather with Samuel, they said, for sure, something going on but they didn't know what was going on oh god almighty jesus uh, until lord your fury was unleashed upon them mighty god we ask that this night that the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of earth upon this land mighty god join forces in total harmony total synchronization total unity father god almighty jesus lord that oh father god almighty jesus hallelujah in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, mighty God. Father God, that souls will be saved. People, mighty God, will... Father God, get up out of their beds of affliction. They'll get up, mighty God, out of their beds. Hallelujah, Jesus, of sin. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus. And that they will run, mighty God, not walk. They will run to the light, mighty God, as you open up the doors, Father God, our mighty Jesus, and free them this night. Father God, because it's not by our might and not by our power, but by your Holy Spirit. So thus saith the Lord, Father God, as I give you my tongue, I give you my intellect i give you all of me father god lord and i say lord jesus let me be decreased father i humble myself before your throne so that you be exalted mighty god because it's not about me lord but all about you as we give you thanks in jesus name hallelujah Amen. hallelujah jesus hallelujah jesus hallelujah brother shannon like i was telling you I had this message um, for quite a while, but the Lord has really sat on me all week. I've had 
I've had, let's just say, sleepless nights. Um, and I know uh, whenever he does that, there's something going on. So tonight, I am bringing forth a message, a message that is titled, Hell's Agent on Assignment, The Destiny Train Wrecker Hookup. It is Hell's Agent on Assignment, The Destiny Train Wrecker Hookup. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The text begins coming from James chapter 1, from verse 12 to 15. It says, Blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Hallelujah. Our story begins in the book of Judges. This was at a time of such lawlessness. There was no leadership of the people anymore. Joshua, all the elders and the generation that had come with him across the desert were now dead. You can read that in the book of Judges chapter 2 from verse 7 to 16. So what does this mean? That a younger generation, a younger generation has come up. Okay, a younger generation that's been born, not in the back-breaking, brick-building bondage of Egypt, where you are the lowest of the low, but a generation that's born into freedom, born and raised in Canaan, the promised land of milk and honey. They are a generation that's running wild. Running wild just like a bunch of kids left home alone without adult supervision. They get into stuff especially the stuff you tell them not to get into. So too have this young generation. They've gotten themselves into such a pickle. They saw nothing wrong with dwelling among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. They saw nothing wrong in bowing down and serving Baal and Ashtoreth. They saw nothing wrong in participating in the lewdness and the sexual perversions. They saw nothing wrong with sacrificing our children to Molech. They saw nothing wrong with marrying uh, the people of the land, their daughters. And they saw nothing wrong in giving their daughters to them to be wives. Everything contrary to God. This angered our Lord so much that he delivered us into the hands of our enemies, into the hands of the Amalekites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Canaanites, the Midianites, the Philistines. And when their oppression became so heavy upon us, we would cry out to him and our God would raise up what we call judges, people from among us, who would be instruments of our God to demonstrate him and his power and be a terror against our tormentors, judges like Othniel, Ehud, Deborah, Gideon, Jephthah, and, Sam and Samson. But why is this happening? All of this is happening because this generation didn't know our God. They didn't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They hadn't witnessed the plagues unleashed upon Egypt to free us from the tyranny of Pharaoh. They didn't witness the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night. They didn't eat manna. They didn't eat heavenly food. And neither did they drink the water from the rock. So it was easy for them to wander away from a God they never knew and disobey his commandments. So easily seduced a way to do whatever they felt like doing and however it pleased them, just like us. A generation that, you know, don't know God's mercy and grace. All we hear about is 
the stories told by our families that tells us, you know, that they had to leave their country, flee tyranny or persecution, you know, come to a land, a land like America, escaping for their lives to find shelter. And if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have made it. They don't know God. Except through the stories they heard how God healed Uncle Joe's left foot after he stepped on a nail. How um, the grandpa's truck broke down and got stuck in a snow ditch. And out of nowhere, this man came with a toe and pulled him out of the ditch and disappeared. Or even how Aunt B died in Charles Burton and was resurrected and came back alive. Stories that you just sit there and you listen to. You said, no. This is not true. This is your imagination. There's no such thing. This couldn't have happened. We can't identify with that. Neither could this new generation. After all God had done in bringing us out of Egypt, allowing us to win wars, and bringing us into the land of milk and honey, and telling us, don't mix with the people of the land. Don't worship their gods. Don't do the things that they do. Be separated. So, it was easy for them to serve Baal and Ashtaroth. They could not see with their natural eyes the God of their forefathers and foremothers. So they served the gods of the land that they could see, that they could touch. So now, let us Fast forward, we're going to go to Judges 13, which tells us about the prophecy and the birth of Shannon. Uh, Shannon. <laughs> I said Shannon. That's okay. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> help me, Jesus. The prophecy and the birth of Samson. He is the 12th judge who was raised up at a time where we were under 40 years of Philistine oppression and crying out to God to deliver us. So let's turn quickly, if you could get your Bible, and turn to Judges chapter 13. And we will read from verses 1 through 6. Thank you, Jesus. Judges chapter 13, and read from verses 1 through 6, please. And the word says, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now. Thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Hallelujah. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. Hallelujah. So here, God has answered us by sending an angel to this nameless wife of Manoah, who is from the tribe of Dan. Let us remember that Dan is the fifth son of Jacob, but the firstborn to Leah's handmaid, Bilhah. And Dan's name means God has judged me and has also heard my voice. Now, let us look at the importance God is answering the cry of a people through a nameless, barren woman. A nobody who is chosen to bring forth God's answer to his people. A nobody that an angel of God was sent to visit and given a prophecy that she was going to bear a son. And not just any son, but one who was to be Nazarite from the womb. 
the angel gives her instructions that she wasn't to drink wine, no strong drink, no eat anything unclean, and no razor was to go upon his head. Now let's look at this, because Samson's birth is rather peculiar, because the law of the Nazarite, in Numbers chapter 6, from verse 1 to 21, it states that a man, a woman, meaning full-grown, wanting to separate themselves unto the Lord, they were to follow the laws of the Nazarite, which is to drink no wine or strong drink or eat anything unclean or even cut their hair, meaning even their facial hair. But here we have Samson's mother having to adopt the lifestyle of a Nazarite because of this child that was to be born of her. She could have said, no way, this is going to be too much for me. But she knew his destiny and understood it. Her son was destined for greatness. He had purpose to be the Lord's instrument to deliver his people, her people, an entire nation out of the hand of the Philistines. And that he was to be used to oppress the Philistines even as they oppressed us. So she allowed our God to divinely choose for her and she accepted her responsibility to care for this son according to all that the angel instructed her to do. But let's put some things into perspective. 40 years of Philistine oppression. The number 40 in biblical terms sim symbolizes a period of testing, a period of trial or probation, meaning 40 years of proving our hearts for God. Okay? The place that they were from, Zora, literally means a nest of hornets. Reference to the times that they were in, a time of torment, so much so that we were crying out. Let's just say it they were in a stinging situation. Sister Lena, right? Hallelujah. Yes, forgive brother. me for the interruption, but something has just happened with our blog talk radio, and they're not picking you up. We're fine on MixLR. Can you remember where you left off right there? Hold that point. Yes. Okay. I'll stand by. I want to thank the people for alerting me. Uh, just an attack of the enemy. We're going to bring her right back up. Hold on, folks. BTR host, thank you for the listener out there who told me that uh, blog talk went down. Stand Welcome by. to blog talk radio. Please enter your host pin when... The pin you entered does not match the pin you have on file for your account. What? Please re-enter your pin. To start your show now, press 1. It appears that the host has already dialed into this show. Only one host is allowed per show. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. What's up with that? That's just an attack of the enemy. That's okay. I bind every devil out there tuning in the, in the name of Jesus and place every demon, interfering with the program and the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we loose the angels of God to attack every devil out there. We bind them in the name of Jesus, and we plead the blood of Jesus over all the equipment and over this program tonight. Your weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In so, the name um, of Jesus. I apologize, folks, but I just got an instant message from one of the listeners out there, and they said, we can't hear Sister Lena for those of us that are tuning in by phone. And I just tested it, and sure enough, I'm showing signed in, but I don't hear anything either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set us up on another channel for blog talk, but, folks, we won't be able to open that up for about 25 minutes. So our mainstream is still going. You can listen on MixLR. That's your best place. Or go to YouTube. So, Lena, we haven't lost anything. But um, just the enemy attacking blog talk. So we'll get that back up. Don't worry. Uh, forgive me for the interruption. I didn't mean to do that. But um, here we are. And with that, um, at the top of the hour, I'll be able to reconnect and get us back into a phone network. But... Keep on going. Amen. That. In the name of Jesus. You know what, my brother? This tells us that what we're doing is hitting a home run in the kingdom of darkness. Amen. So we stand on the authority to say, devil, 
we will continue because we have the victory and the people that you are trying to keep bound they will come out of the prison in the name of jesus that the word is going to go forth with a double force in the name of jesus, a double anointing a double portion in the name of jesus of the lord's holy spirit right now that it will destroy and demolish even more even more than the the uh, the gale force winds in the name of jesus so we're not afraid. We are not afraid. I'm not afraid. And I'm sure Mega Man is not afraid. And all those that are out there Amen. listening, we're not afraid. We are bombarding heaven with our prayers. And I thank you right now for all the intercessors in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we'll continue. So here now, we have a stinging situation, a persecution for 40 years, right? In Azora, which means the nest of hornets. We have Samson's father, whose name is Manoah, which literally means rest. We are crying out to our God for rest from our tormentors. Just like there are many of us right now crying out to God from our tormentors. Then comes Samson, whose name means man of the sun. You see, the Holy Spirit tonight is going to appear for his people tonight and God himself is going to shine the light on all those that are stuck in darkness though those that I feel like they can't get out of sin because God is going to show you the way out hallelujah God says I'm sending Samson the 12th judge born into a tribe whose name means judge who is part of his rightful inheritance because of his lineage and bloodline the meaning of the number 12, which is considered a perfect number, symbolizes the apostolic authority, God's power and authority, and the foundation of his perfect government. Hallelujah. So we know God is going to use Samson to judge the Philistines and use him also to demonstrate his power, demonstrate his government, upon a people that had turned their back on him but would now turn their back to their sovereign god amen the word of god says samson would judge for 20 years the number 20 we look at it it's two tens means two 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 tens and the ten means testimony it also means law responsibility and the completeness of order god's divine order it's a time of rest. So the Lord has given Israel rest during this time. Now we're going to get into the meat of the word. We see in Judges chapter 14 verse 1. Samson's first encounter with the Philistines. He goes to a place called Timnath. This is the same Timnath that was given as an inheritance to Joshua. In Joshua 19, verse 49 to 50, according to the word of the law, it is also the place where Joshua was buried, according to Joshua 24, 30. Now, Timnath means an extra portion or an abundant portion, which means that the enemy is sitting up in our harvest. Amen? So, Samson goes to Timnath and he sees this Philistine woman and says i want her for my wife and so begins the life and troubles of samson the philistines the philistines come up on this woman and threaten her why samson had told a riddle and he said to the philistines that are gathered there saying if you told me i'm going to give you this ramson this um ramson but they were unable to solve the riddle. So they went and threatened her, told her that they were going to burn her and her father's house. And so she, fearing for her life, started now to vex and frustrate the man of God to tell her the meaning of the riddle. Now take note, because a man or woman of God, chosen by God for you, will not so quickly and I say that again, will not so quickly or so easily betray you, even at the fear of their own life. Even the courts today in our USA recognize a privilege which is called husband-wife privilege, where a husband and wife 
cannot be forced to testify against one another. But here in Judges chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, we see Samson's wife weeping before him. And she says, but you hate me and don't love me. And she's crying all these crocodile tears frustrated him. So he told her the answer. What happens? 30 Philistines were killed that day because Samson had to go pay the ransom. 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. Now, where does he get it? But from the Philistines. How appropriate that the first mission of Samson to deliver us out of the hand of the Philistines ends up in him killing 30 Philistines. Why? Because the number 30 signifies your calling. Samson's calling was to be judge and also the arm of execution of our God. So we see Samson doing what he's called to do, spoil the Philistines as, he, as they spoiled us. But on the flip side, the number 30 also means betrayal, like the blood money of Judas, the 30 pieces of silver. Samson, in the end, ended up with a double betrayal, one by his wife. She told the riddle and another by his, uh, his, uh, his father-in-law because of all the problem and the troubles that happened. The father-in-law says, you know what? I don't want this man anymore to be my, um, my son-in-law. So I'm going to give her away to Samson's companion. Imagine that the woman that you done betrothed now ends up with your best friend. That is a gut punch. Now let's take a quick look. Galatians chapter 5. And I'm going to read you verse 16 to 17. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Samson battling between the desire of what he needs to do, what he was birthed for, and his desire for foreign women and his taste. So what happens? Judges chapter 15, Samson goes back demanding his wife, finds out that his father-in-law had given her away to his companion, went on a revenge rampage, burns down the cornfield of the Philistines, and they set fire to his father-in-law and his wife. And then on top of that, there's a quarrel between him and the tribe of Judah who got so upset at him that he had started this quarrel. So what do they do? Hug tie him and Gave him over to the Philistines. But we know all things work together for good. And the Lord used this as, as an occasion to render judgment. And a thousand Philistines were slaughtered that day. You would think now, after Samson's encounter with this Philistine woman, that he would have said enough of wanting my own way. Because he went and he desired a woman, not of his people. He was Nazarite, but he wanted the unclean, lusted after the unclean. And see, we have to be very careful when we find ourselves in situation and that because God happens to move upon that situation to believe that it is of God. It is not of God that Samson would have married that woman. It is as God that that would be an occasion to stir up mischief amongst the Philistines. When Samson went back and demanded her, now it stirs everything up all over again. What happens after his ordeal with the Philistines? He goes about and what does Samson do? He goes and he visits a harlot. We see that in Judges 16, 1. Falling yet again into the hand of the enemy. The, en the enemy knows now Samson's desire. He likes our women. And he likes the women that are, let's just say, 
not a one woman man right not a, not a one man woman let's just say that so they set this trap and samson ends up escaping and walks out with the doors to the entrance to the city does samson stop what samson is doing and i want us right now even though i'm speaking about samson god is speaking to his children male and female samson could be let's just say a pauline right whom because she desires the unbeliever or because she desire this person who is a believing person and she thinks he's perfect and been chosen by God, she starts to orchestrate everything to make this a perfect match, right? But what happens? We see in Judges chapter 16, verse 4, Samson goes to this place called Sorek. And at Sorek, he meets upon a woman named Delilah. Okay? Sorek means the valley of the fertile spot. Valley of the choice vine. The best grapes or what we can call the valley of sweet temptation. That's that same sweet temptation that was in the Garden of Eden. When Eve looked upon and saw that the fruit was pleasing to the eyes. She forgot that we were not allowed to eat of the tree of good and evil. She desired it for herself. So Samson meets Delilah. Who is Delilah? Her name means one who weakens, one who uproots. Or in Arabic, it means night or let's just say the queen of the night. What we call woman of the night, prostitute or harlot. Which brings us to her Hebrew meaning, temptress. Delilah is hell's agent on assignment. Samson's destiny train wrecker. She forms an ungodly alliance with his enemies and enters into a contract with the five lords of the Philistines to help them trap Samson. And what was the price? 1,100 pieces of silver each. Why not gold? Why silver? Even in the silver is the Lord speaking. Silver comes from the Hebrew word kasaf, means strong desire. I ask us today, who is our Delilah and what is our kasaf? Who is weakening us to pull us away from our destiny? Delilah betrayed him not once, not twice three times until she came to hallelujah until she came to verse let's just say from verse 15 on to verse 19 and she said unto him how canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me thou was not told Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Let's just stop there for a moment. Delilah, for three times, everything came out of Samson's mouth to say, why are you strong? Why are you killing the Philistines? Each time that he opened his mouth and spoke, he said to her at once, he said, if you tie me up with seven green with 
and that were never dried, then I'll be weak. What does she do? Tie him up. She ties him up. She bound him. She calls for the Philistines and he busts out. Samson still goes back again. And this time he says to her, if you bind me with new ropes that have never been occupied, then I'll be weak. Then what does she do? She bound him. Then she called for the Philistines. He busts out. The third time, he says, if you weave the seven locks of my head with the web. So she did it. And he broke free. But this time, the enemy knew they had got him because Samson kept coming back to the betrayer. There is something that keeps us going back to the pit, even though we claim we hate the pit, even though we claim it is keeping us from doing God's work, even though it's keeping us from reading his word, even though it keeps us from praying, even though it keeps us from fellowshipping, but we keep going back and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it again. And so the noose becomes even tighter and tighter and tighter. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's continue now in verse 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money. She collected and she collected well. I am speaking to those of us right now who are fearlessly pursuing the Lord. But on the other hand, pining a strong desire for love. Samson, born with purpose, about to be shipwrecked by a lying love. How many of us that has purpose, destiny. Our parents have spent many years on their knees praying God's will into the womb. We have heard prophecies upon prophecies what we are called to do. But we keep running after the Philistine temptress. Samson couldn't seem to get it right. Wasting away his purpose on flesh. Flesh could mean porn, food, women, alcohol, drugs, or even a devilish person with the flashes of light. That person that you are drawing nigh to, you say, this is a man of God. He speaks the words, or it's woman of God. Because we're not going to be particular or partial about any gender. We're speaking to us, women and men, brothers and sisters in Christ. This message is for us in Christ because this means nothing to the ones that are out there that are not in Christ. You praying to God for the strong desire, marriage. And you make a connection. And the Lord says, there are many of my people making these hookups that I've not, I've not chosen. Hookups through Facebook. Hookups through the ministries that are coming on this radio show. Trying to contaminate and defile the holiness of the altar of this program. But God says, enough! He says that you need to pay attention and look to see and make sure you're not hooking up with Delilah. And why are we saying that? We have allowed our itch to get so great that we feel we need to scratch it with just about anything and anyone. Right? We meet the beautiful, seductive Delilah. 
on our pathway to destiny. Now, Delilah can also be Damon, okay? And we express the feeling of loneliness, and so we seem to be walking along in agreement. But I tell you, it's a setup. We say the uh, the word of God tells us, and surely it does. It says, better to marry than to burn. But let us not misunderstand the scripture and marry carelessly. Let us not marry because of a kasaf, a strong desire to feel, to hold on to someone, someone to share your bed, someone to keep you warm when it gets cold. The one thing that we need to understand that woman was Samson's weakness. He had an appetite for the foreign woman. And I ask you, what kind of man or woman is your weakness? Is she Latina with that long dark hair? Is she the woman with the hips and the bust to die for? Or let's just say it's the bad boy kind of man. Our James Dean. He says he is a man of God and he still smokes. He still drinks. And he still does the things that he's not supposed to do. But you know what? That's the kind of man that I like. Oh, is it this stud? You know, when you get around him, he rocks your world like nobody's business. And then cause you to throw caution to the wind and do those things that cause you to fornicate or even defile your marriage bed. Who is your Delilah? What price will you be sold? What price will you allow yourself to be sold to the devil? And I'm saying this to those of us that are in relationships right now, and I call it hookups. Is it a hookup for destiny or is it a hookup for the train wreck of your destiny? I say to you, have you double checked with the Lord to make sure you're not hearing the voice of the enemy or even your own voice because you feel alone and lonely and surely God means for us to have an Adam and yes he did but let us remember that Adam didn't know he was lonely God looked on him found favor in Adam and said I'm going to get him have you allowed God to go and get you your Eve have you allowed God to get you your Adam I say to you this night that you should check and double check to make sure that the voice you're hearing is the voice of God. And I say, if this message causes us, even one of us, to stop and just say, hold on, things are going too fast here. Let me go too fast. Let me get into some deeper prayer. Let me call for prayer from the church or even ask my brothers to pray for me before I make this lifetime commitment. Because my brothers and sisters, when you marry in the Lord, it is lifetime. The only reason and the only way for you to be able to get a divorce is through adultery or what they call the Pauline privilege. Because the man has mistreated you and abused you. God won't, won't want you to stay in an abusive relationship. Otherwise, you are stuck. You're hitched your wagon to a runaway horse. And it ain't going nowhere but straight to hell. What is this all about? Samson found himself in a place. Where Delilah got him in a place of trust. I can just imagine the first time, the second time, the third time, she probably giggled and said, you know, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just testing to see if it was real. And he bought into it. How many of us have bought into the, the you know, when they begin to act up? Or she begins to act up, or he begins to act up and be, you know, acting contrary and say, wait a minute, if you're a man of God, then you shouldn't be doing this. You're not supposed to be punching walls. You're not supposed to want to raise your hand at me. Wait a minute. But no, he says, you know what? I was angry. Or she says, you know what? I, I felt lonely. And, you know, and, and Jimmy came over and, and he spoke nice to me. And you haven't spoken nice to me all week. What happens? 
verse 19 of Judges 16. Sister Lena? And she, hallelujah. Yes, stay brother. right there. Let that be your starting point. I'm going to connect this back into the phone line. To give us two seconds, folks, we'll have the phone line back up for you. Okay, let me get into that real quick. This is an awesome message. If you're just tuning in, we're live with Minister Lena Nita, evangelist. Stand by. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. To start your show now. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Blog Talk Radio. All right, praise the Lord, everybody. We're back up uh, also on phone lines at 646-668-2197. Lena, sorry for the interruption. Keep on going. you got all the time you want. Uh Uh-oh. Lena, check. You may be muted. See if that button is red. Okay, uh, folks, stand by. We lost Lena. Let me bring her back on. Hold on. I'm dialing. Once again, we just cover all the connections tonight in the blood of Jesus. I want to do a sound check out there. Can you all still hear me on MixLR? YouTube? Okay, stand by. I'm not hearing any ringing. Okay, Dave LeBlanc, we've still got audio in the chat room over at MixLR. Somebody? Somebody can hear us? Okay, we still got audio in MixLR. Okay, that's great. Okay, Lena has went down the uh, Skype... It's not answering, so let me try her again. Hold on. YouTube is still working out there. Okay. What I'm going to have to do is just go to a song. We'll just take a quick break. We're not pressed for time, so we're going to be fine. We'll be right back. She came along and he touched me. I'd never be the same. He touched me with his mighty power. No refuse, holy name. My life was full of so much confusion. My heart was full of sin and shame. Jesus came along and he touched me I'd never be the same Jesus came along and he touched me I'd never be the same He touched me with his mighty power No refuse, holy name My life was full of so much confusion My heart was full of sin and shame Jesus came along and he touched me I've never been the same He gives me beauty for ashes Yeah, I'll drive for morning The garments of praise For the spirit of heaviness I am a tree of righteousness The planting of the Lord And Jesus is glorified He's the same along and he touched me I'd never be the same He touched me with his mighty power No refuse, holy name My life was full of so much confusion My heart was full of sin and shame Jesus came along and he touched me And I'd never be the same Jesus came along and he touched me And I'd never be the same Help me with my power. No refuse, 
jolly name. My life was full of so much confusion. My heart was full of pain and shame. Jesus came along and he set me And I'd never been the same. He gave me beauty for a righteous. The Isle of Joy for morning. The garments of bread for the spirit of heaven. And I am a seed of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. And Jesus. To take a ride, grab your coffee and strap yourself in because the show is about to begin. From the front lines of America, Babylon, and transmitting worldwide on the internet and satellite, you are listening to Omega Man Radio Network with Shannon Davis. Hello, Elena. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Brother Shannon. All right. We're back. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yes, everybody, we are. we're back up online. We've also got the uh, phone line switchboard up. So if you want to listen by phone, a couple people already there. Good. The number is 646-668-2197. So, uh, Elena, we're just going to back up a minute. And um, you, you left off with you're going to read a scripture verse. Pick back up from there whenever you're ready. Yes. Yes, I am. I was going to read Judges 16. Let's do it. Verse, verse 19. And the word of God says, And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. Let's, let us understand how the enemy operates. The enemy is only able to come in and steal from you when you have found your place, your, yourself caught in a place of vulnerability. You are so trusting. You are asleep. Because if you're watchful and paying attention, then I'm sure Samson would not have allowed them to cut his hair off. But he was in this in the lap. He was sleeping on her knees. Okay? And then she began to afflict him. Affliction could mean, you know, this person saying to you, what kind of man of God are you? You know, what kind of woman of God are you? You should be home cooking and cleaning for me. You know, or, or, or as a man saying, what, what, what kind of man do you call yourself? You know, you can't even provide for your family. You know, speaking down and make you feel low, destroying your manhood. Or, or as a woman say to you, 
Who wants to listen to you preach? What do you know about scripture? Woman, shut your mouth. Or as a woman, you know, when this spirit rises up in her, she looks at the man and said, you know what? If you get up there and you say one thing, I'm going to tell the church all about you. You ain't no good. What You're no good man, no good husband, no good father. And you go up there and you're acting like you are godly. You ain't nothing. You can't even bring home the bacon. You you can't even work. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. You're nothing. I don't know why I even married you. You are no good account for nothing. So I'm asking us, those of us right now that are lying in the lap of the enemy, Falling asleep because they make us feel good. They know how to touch us in the right place. They know how to tell us the right things and to sing the scriptures to us. The Lord is my shepherd. And we think that, oh, wait a minute. This is a man or woman of God. Or she waits on you and she make you feel like a man because she lifts you up and gets you all puffed up. And then she says to you, but honey, are you sure you need to go to church tonight? Why don't you just stay home with me tonight and, and we could just run the bubbles. And you forget that you're supposed to be there leading the prayer ministry. They're waiting for you. But you called somebody else who's never done it before and said, hey, I'm sure he can do it. I'm just going to stay home with my wife. I'm just going to stay home with my girlfriend, you know, and spend some time with her. And so I say to you, where are the Delilah that you are lying on their knees in your life? I say to you, is it in the moment of the throes of passion? And I say throes of passion because we have become so lustful. We can't wait. So we got to go like Samson and go get us a Philistine man or woman. And we can't be satisfied because guess what? As we lose one, we're replaced with another. And then comes time where we're like, I don't know why I keep attracting the same woman. All of them are Jezebel. All of them are Delilah. I don't know why I keep attracting this man. They all want to abuse me. They want to use me. Why? 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 It is not them. The problem was Samson. Samson was chosen for greatness, but a great man found himself comfortable in the pit. He thought himself that he was a chicken, so he started to eat worms. He was brought up as a Nazarite to stay away from the unclean. But he went from one unclean to another, to another, to another. And each time the Lord was rescuing him. Each time the Lord turned the bad situation for good. And so now we're saying, yeah, 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 it is of God. So I'm going to stick it out. And I'll keep going. All the signs is telling me, run, run, run from my life because guess what? She's trying to keep me from doing what God has called me to do. She's trying to keep me from being the preacher that my mama keep telling me that I was brought up to be a preacher. I look through my bloodline. All of them are preachers. But look at me right now. I am nothing. I am nothing. I'm about a drunk and a sloth. That's what I am. But you know what? When I go home, she hands me this glass. Of rum on the rocks. And she makes me feel good. You know. Or. Or we see ourselves. Wait a minute. You know what. Maybe this is all I'm going to have. You know I'm getting old now. So what. I'm, I'm getting old. So I need to find somebody before I get too old. And the Lord is saying enough is enough. I can't still bring forth children whenever, if you're in my will. Why are we in a hurry? And I'm saying this to you for you to really stop and check check for a moment. Just look at yourself in the mirror and say, is this what God wants for me? Is this part of my destiny? Is that person that I'm hanging out with part of my future? Or are they my past? And I'm telling you this because I myself almost got caught up in it. And it all says, remind them of what almost happened to you. I was in a quick process. 
pursuit for my God, running and sprinting for him. And all of a sudden, breaks. Hallelujah. Never looked at anybody else. Never saw no man in my life. I was just eyes for Jesus. But he made himself so big and large. Looked at me one day and said, how do you know that God didn't send me to you and chose you for my wife? Then one day he says to me, how do you not know? What if God says to you, stop ministry and just be a regular? And my response was, what do you mean? Why would God put a gift inside of me to burn and bring forth fruit? And then I should just sit on it and let it spoil? I said, I don't understand why God would do this. But you see, I was at that point in my time where I didn't fully fathom and understand what the word meant. That the word inside of me, that disturbance that was telling me something was wrong. And I said, but you know what, Lord, whatever you said, I want to do. But then they started to be jealous because God started to move in my life. And then I started, the Lord says, look, open your eyes. I said, wait a minute. Why are you jealous if you, if you are supposed to be? be the man in my life then run with me but he wanted to hold my hand and yes when he held my hand I felt what you felt and why was I able to feel what you felt because I know what it felt like before I have two children I know what it feels like when a man touch a woman and I know what it feels like when he looks upon us with those eyes, those bedroom eyes that says, come, 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 come. But I thank God for his mercy that he kept me. And as he kept me so he can keep you. And I say to you, wait, don't let yourself be found in the lap of Delilah. That the spirit of the Lord would abandon you. Remember what she did did to Samson she began to afflict him because when the enemy derail and shipwreck you he's gonna laugh and mock at you and said see I told you where a nobody you're gonna remain a nobody look at you thinking you're gonna be like your great grandfather Joe preaching up a storm you ain't gonna preach no storm up because you can't find yourself out of the storm look at you wanna say you're gonna prophesy how can you not see the slap coming at you how can you not see the Jezebel Delilah around you? No, you think you some hot fine thing and that they coming after you. And so you said, you know what, Lord? I want her to be beautiful. And she's got to be a 36B. And she's got to have a 22, 36 hips. And she's got to be five, no more than five feet. Do you not think the enemy already hearing those things? So what does he create? The perfect man, the perfect woman, athletic. Yes, with buns that could crack a nut. Yes. And muscles to hold on to. That when he puts his arms around you, you feel snug and secure. But then you forget once you hook up with him. And I'm speaking now to those of us that have done hooked up. And in a marriage, hallelujah, Jesus, with Damon and Delilah. Hallelujah. And now we are stuck. Because guess what? What we thought it was going to be that Delilah or even, let's, let's say, Damon, going to be there for us. But then comes, the, you know what, honey, I got to work late. So now you start to find yourself at home alone eating because the honeymoon is over he's no longer even getting up and praying for you anymore he's no longer getting up and fixing you breakfast in bed no longer rubbing your feet no longer telling you how beautiful you are he just sits there and scratches and burps and you're wondering but the gift of god says he adds no sorrow what is the sorrow? Samson realized that the Lord had left him. I say to you that Samson was caught with the lust of his eyes. And what did the 
Philistines do. They dug out his eyes and bound him and made him a spectacle. Many of us, the enemy has made us a spectacle right now. We can't even go back to our churches because we've been shacking up and jacking up with everybody. And they said, wait a minute. You can't be a pastor. And they are right to tell you to sit down acting like that and calling ourselves men and women of God. I can't wait. The heat in our body is consuming us. But I'm telling you, like he says, better to marry than burn. If you, if you choose the burning of your desire to marry, I am telling you that you have another burn coming. And it's the burning flames of hell. Samson, in the end, cried out to God and said, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars and lean upon them. He says, Lord, remember me and strengthen me. Only this one, God, that I may once avenge the Philistines for my two eyes. Let us remember, though God moved upon Solomon, uh, upon Samson, he never got his eyesight back because his eyes were an affront. It was an interruption. It was a separation between him and God. The Bible says if your right eye offend you, pluck it out. If your left arm offend, cut it off. If your left foot, cut it off. It says better to go in with one eye, one hand, one leg than to end up in hell. The devil doesn't like this because he would rather us to have the seed, the talent that God has given us to be buried and rot. And then we die without purpose and destiny. Too many of us are dying without purpose and destiny. Yes, we got things to overcome. We got to overcome the negative words that they keep speaking. We got to overcome the things that have been done. We got to keep overcoming our past. Because our past, as much as we are running for our future, the past is running and hunting us down at the same time. He says, yes, I know you like this kind of person. And the devil did know what kind of man that I liked. I liked them to be intelligent and able to hold a conversation. Because I hated a man that I could not even talk about finance with. So he sent him fine and, and looking nice and On top of that, he was a pastor, a man of God, but he wasn't worth nothing because even though he had the word, he didn't have the word inside of his spirit. It was just foaming out of his mouth and he wound his web. And as he wooed and seduced me and got me to stop and put on the brakes because I was running so fast. I didn't even have time to smell the roses, but thank God that everything worked together for good for those that love the Lord, for those that are called according to his purpose. Thank God that he turned my mess, hallelujah, into a message. And if that didn't happen, I would not be able to bring forth this message to you tonight. So I say to you, listen up and listen good. Check yourself in that mirror. Look and say, God, is Johnny, is Peter, is Benny, is... Whomever his name may be that is hunting after me. Is he the one that you have for me, God? Then if he isn't, then blind his eyes. You pluck out his eyes, God. Because I don't want to lose my eyes. My eyes are fixed on you. We need to look in the mirror and ask God and say, You know what? This is what I like. But what I've liked in the past in womankind has done nothing, oh God, but betrayed me. They have done nothing, oh God. But he used and abused me. They have done nothing, oh God, that made me a scorn and a shame, even to my family. God Almighty Jesus, I don't want me no girlfriend. I don't want me no girl. I want me a wife this time. God Almighty Jesus, I give you my strong desire. I turn, hallelujah, Jesus, my silver. And I say, Lord, toss it into the fire. Let it come out like gold, mighty God. I want what you want from me because God even though she may not be as beautiful as I want her Lord let the light your light shine in her let the light your light shine in him that when I look upon him I when I look upon her I will see the beauty your beauty shining forth 
uh, because God Almighty Jesus, when this on the outside is gone, what will I have left? But the righteousness of God has shines back at me to say, this is my helpmate. And God, you have chosen well for me. My God, I give you the desire. Take these desires of my loins from me, Lord. Take away this loneliness and this feeling that any man, peace of anything is better than none at all. I do not agree with the things of this world. I want you and you only. I don't want to be shipwrecked by no devil agent. I don't want to be shipwrecked, hallelujah, Jesus, by the forces of darkness. I don't want no counterfeit. I want what you got. Oh, Father God, what you've got for me. Because... If you see a twin and the twin look like it belongs from God, check the insides because a lot of the insides are empty. They look beautiful on the outside. They walk the walk and talk the talk. But when the door shuts, they become somebody else. They become something else. They start to punch holes. They start to yell and scream. They start to throw things. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that wonderful, awesome man. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, is a demon you done marry. A demon you've been sleeping with. Uh, a demon you've been seeing all this time. Yes, yes, yes. I say that to you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you see, Samson. Uh, there's another little thing I got to share with you. The name Manoah means uh, a buffoon. Samson was born out of a buffoon. Uh, his father was so foolish uh, that even when his wife uh, appeared unto him and told him that an angel of God, he says, for well, sure, really? So let us uh, pray and ask the God that the angel will come and visit you once again. Question is, why did an angel visit the man of God? It is from his bloodline, uh, the tribe of Dan, that the son was going to come. Uh, but there was something wrong. God had to fix it. God fixed it in the nameless woman uh, and nobody that became somebody when she's remembered not her mama Shenda as Manoah but the mother of Samson. Uh, she will go down in history because when her son said I desire me a Philistine the woman of God stood up uh, in the responsibility and the covenant contract that she accepted uh, and said I will accept uh, the responsibility to raise my child uh, to be separated. Uh, so don't complain when your mother said to you why are you hanging out with them people? Why you want to go to those places with those people? Do you not know that light and darkness cannot share and occupy the same space she said to her son isn't there any amongst our people for you to choose from she didn't realize that because of the strong desire for a son that God was going to use that as an occasion to render judgment one man who could slay a thousand with the jawbone of an ass. Immediately after he slayed a thousand Philistines, he cried it out to God and said, Are you going to let me die of thirst? We are saying, God, are you going to let me grow old with nobody next to me? Here I am doing your work. I done already done this, God. I done already done that, God. But God is saying, on whose strength? Because when Samson's locks were cut off his head, he had no more strength. He rose up thinking he was going to do what he always did and shake them off. But all the shook, he shook. He couldn't shake nothing. And they were able to capture him. They were able to bind him up, to laugh 
a mock and jeer. I say to you tonight, say that devil, tell that devil, look him dead in the eye and say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of my bed, come out of my belly, refuse to sleep with that man, refuse to sleep with that girl, refuse to let him touch you and make you feel any way. I know that at the end, when they go on, hallelujah, Jesus, you're going to be convicted. You're going to feel guilt. And the devil going to say, what kind of Christian are you that you let them do you like that? Let them touch you like that. All you want is sex, sex, sex. Let me tell you something. Sex got something into trouble. And I say to you tonight, doesn't need to get you into trouble. If you wait, and wait patiently on the Lord, and allow him to dress your eyes, that the light, the light of God will shine through, that the light in the dark moments, when it gets cold, those moments when the thoughts come, to say to you, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you call this person or that person? And you know, if you call them, they're going to start to talk in some ways that is not going to be respectful to you. I say to you, do like I've been doing. In the name of Jesus, this ain't my thought. And grab you your electric blanket, turn the heat up, and go to bed. When you get up in the morning, it shall pass. You will not even remember the desires because your thoughts are all back on track. Your train is heading back on the road. Yes, head in heaven bound. And you've not allowed the enemy to win over like he's always been winning over. Because you woke up with a purpose, a purpose-driven mind, with a purpose, destiny-driven mind, to say, I shall live as long as I have breath. I'm going to praise. I'm going to serve the Lord. I shall live. I shall not die, and I will declare his mighty works in this land to tell people that what you're going through, there is a solution. And I know the solution because it was proven for me. And here I stand because I waited. Look whom God has blessed me with. It is true. Many testimonies, 40-year-old virgin that I do know, 40-year-old virgin, she got married, and at the age of 40, she not only had a husband, but God blessed her with a child. Our God can do wondrous, marvelous things if we allow him to do it. I say to you, young men in your 30s, they haven't married and feeling the clock ticking and make you feeling old that you need to be married and have children. I say to you, tell everybody in your family, you ain't going to marry no Delilah. You're not going to sleep with no Philistine. You're going to wait on God to show you Ruth as she labors and gleans in the field. Yes. And I say to you, hallelujah, Jesus, young women out there, that the doctor is telling you, hurry up and get married so you can have baby. Because you have this issue and that issue. Come on. God can do anything. Children are heritage from the Lord. Let us not be wasteful. And let us certainly, in the name of Jesus, not be a buffoon about the great calling on our lives to go to share the gospel of the good news 
to tell them about Jesus, what he's done for us in our lives, and what he can do for them. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. No wonder the enemy got angry tonight. <laughs> this was a home run for Jesus of the truth. Wow. Jesus. Praise Thank God. You, Jesus. Right now, awesome word tonight for many people tuning in. Brother we, Shannon. Yes, ma'am. I want to add this scripture real quick. Absolutely. You uh, continue on as you desire. I'm going to read Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 19 to 23, but I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. And I want everyone just to listen for a moment here. Allow the Lord to speak to you. And it reads, It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Frenzied and joy, joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods. Magic show religion. Paranoid loneliness. Cutthroat competition. All consuming yet never satisfied once. A brutal temper. An impotence to love or be loved. Divided homes and divided lives. Small-minded and lopsided pursuits. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival. Uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions. Ugly parodies of community. I could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you, you know. If you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, I I'm say... Gonna... Go ahead. It is with a very heavy heart, my brother. Yes. That I shared this message. I wrestled all week. But the Lord says, look at the people that have been coming through your ministry. I hear it time and time again. They say, I'm getting older. My family's pressuring me. I'm 39. I laugh. I say, 39, 40, you're still young. I say to the men, I said, you can keep having. I said, look at Larry King. If he can produce a child, <laughs> That's true. why can't you? Good point. You know, look at Sarah. I remind him, I said, look at Sarah. God can do whatever God wants to do. Seek him first. The law says to say and to remind everyone, Eve was God's reward to Adam. And God could have spoken Eve into existence, but God fashioned her perfect. God took a rib from Adam and made and framed Eve. She came with such beauty that when Adam looked at her, he says, whoa, man, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. That is what 
when you are connected by God is to happen. Bone of bone, flesh of flesh. That no devil can come in and destroy. Where you have that code that I've forsaken mother, father, brother, sister, everybody. And now I will cleave to this man or this woman of God for the joint purpose, the joint destiny to see our God glorified and magnified. Amen. Hallelujah. I say amen to that. I've got a uh, scripture I'll just tack on here tonight. And we have open lines. We still have time. You can dial in right now if you'd like to speak to Evangelist Lena Nita at 646-668-2197. We've got about 25, 30 minutes left on the clock. Call in right now. Press option 1 at 646-668-2197. The um, scripture is over in 2 Corinthians 6.14. I was uh, I was married to Delilah. <laughs> Lord <laughs> God help me. And um, my grandfather had a dream. He had a dream of uh, four people in my family. Um, they were all prophetic. One was swinging in a, like one of these uh, hammocks. And it would swing way out to the left. And then swing way back to the right. Another one in the, the family, he saw a calendar by his head. And the wind just took it and blew it. And the page is just flying. Another one had a warning. Make a change or there will be something uh, devastating to happen. And he was, um, he was paralyzed from the neck down. And then, unfortunately, I was in the dream. And the dream was, if you remain in Mexico... You'll be like Samson with your eyes poked out, pushing the grindstone around, making cornmeal. I barely escaped that. That's Jesus. another story. By the skin of my teeth, literally the prophetic day came, and I, I was seized with a panic attack almost. I said, dear God. And all of a sudden I remembered that word, and um, I said, it's... <laughs> It's now or never. I barely escaped death. I would have been with my eyes poked out. Many of you have probably been right there too. And after I got out of all that, Lena, about two years later, going through a divorce trial, custody battle, it was rough. I just said, dear God, the struggle's too hard. It would be better just to go back with my head tucked down and just go back into captivity. <laughs> I laugh at it now, but it, it was deadly serious because I said, Lord, I need an answer. And he gave me a word. He said, I'm lost not after her beauty with thine eyes. Lord, are you talking to me? He, I opened the word. That's how he talked. Then I closed the, the King James Bible, opened it up, and it fell open to this verse. 2 Corinthians 6.14 be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And by that time, I'm thinking, God, I think you've got my attention, but would you give me a confirmation? I closed the Bible. I said, Lord, if you're speaking to me, give me a word. I opened it back up, and as God is my witness, it fell open to Galatians 5 that you were just reading from over in Galatians. The verse was, Number one, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So wherever you are right now, as Lane is saying, maybe you're single, and you've held out, and people are pressuring you to get married, and you say, I haven't found the right one. Don't yoke up with what would be a train wreck, and yoke you up to the grindstone, Guys or gals, you could be with the male version of the Delilah. You could be with the gigolo, a player. And he's going to play you and he's going to play other girls too. He won't be faithful to you. When he's done with you, he'll toss you away and go after somebody else. 
it works both ways, doesn't it, Lena? Yes, it does, my brother. Yes, it does. Yes, 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 it does. And it's crazy because at the end of it, we feel, and especially for those of us that have the um, prophetic mantle in us, we find ourselves kicking dirt in the sand. And we're like, how come I couldn't see? I couldn't see. You can never see when you're in it yourself. The eyes have to be on the outside looking in. You just have to open your heart and be willing and able to receive, receive, receive the construction, the instruction coming from the Lord. It could be even in the auntie that you're like, she's the only one, you know, that's telling me to, you know, um, leave that person or not be with that person anymore because everybody else in your family accepts. I say to you, pay attention to that one auntie, that one uncle, that one friend. It could be the voice of God speaking through them. It sure can. There's been many a awesome woman who was taken down by a player and vice versa. Yes. I was married to the Philistine. It works both ways. So Lena is giving you the word of the Lord tonight. You don't want to be yoked. You don't want to be yoked with the wrong person. And uh, part two of that is if you have before and God has set you free. The word of the Lord is stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with Amen. the yoke of bondage. Amen. Uh, because it was a yoke <laughs> to hold you down, a chain, a millstone. Around Amen. my neck, Lena, around your neck, around others out there? Oh, yes. Yes, they had it. I'm telling you, Brother Shannon, I am not ashamed. I'm, as everybody know, my life is an open book. I don't care. I don't hide anything. I have nothing to hide. So what is it the devil is going to come and throw in my face? Nothing. I was. I had a noose around my neck. And you know what? It kind of felt good in the beginning. Sure. It, it was it was good to have somebody that was cooking for you because I hate to cook. They were cooking and, and doing things and wanting to drive. And, you know, oh, all of a sudden now I was able to go back to doing some of the things that I really enjoyed doing, which was like going to the beach. And I was like, hey, how about if we go down to the beach? Yes, why don't we go look at the stars? Things that I love and enjoy to do. I love those quiet moments. But in the midst of it, I noticed something. Um, and I said, Lord... At first, I was saying to myself, I am just being, how do you say, um, not able to humble myself because I knew whoever God would send my way has to be able to stand strong against me, right? But one thing I did realize, and I didn't realize it on, until later, was that the word of God within me was already churning up stuff that when I started to measure what was coming out of his mouth against what the Lord is saying to you. I was like, wait a minute. I can hear God for myself. You know, I understand when God speaks to me and what you're saying right now is not, no, 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 that doesn't sound of God. So I started to, to question. And as I threw the question back, it created um, irritation. And, but you know what? God used that situation was to pound me. Because I'm telling you, I was a rebel with a cause. I was running. I was Peter with the with the sword, just cutting, just cutting, 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 cutting. And God used that was to teach me how to wield a sword with a fine precision, how to sit back, look, and wait, because the enemy will always show himself. And it has kept me through ministry, standing there at the pulpit ministering. And these guys come and they parade or they send these little notes. The, the Lord says, look, look, look for the spirit behind. And I watch it and I see it. And I say, thank you, God. My place is to be in your presence because I do not want to be a statistic. And I'm saying it. I do not want to be a statistic of a woman of God that went down because she had an itch. That God couldn't scratch. And she needed somebody in her bed. The place that I am coming from. I am coming from a deep dark place when it comes to lust and sexual perversion. And the enemy had wrapped a noose around my neck. And was leaning me down there through a man of 
God to take me back to my past. And I chose God. And I tell you, listen to the still small voice. Don't call. Don't make contact. The moment you pick up that phone, it is a serpent's tongue that's going to come to tickle your ears. And if you've escaped, the enemy's going to try to pull you back in. And he has tempted people, and I've seen him go back. Don't know what happened to him now. They just took him out. It happens yeah. all the time. Because then the, enemy, then the enemy makes you think, well, nobody is going to have me. How yes. am I going to find anybody? Maybe it's easier to go back to what I had, even though if it was perfect, why did you leave in the beginning with, you know? <laughs> and I'm preaching to myself because it's, I've, been, I've been right there. Yes, and myself too, because you know what, Brother Shannon, let us be honest, right? When they are taken out of our lives, we do like Samson, we go and try to recover. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me call and see if he's as miserable as I am, <laughs> right? <laughs> let us be honest. People, we understand what you're going through. We do. That reminds me of a song I wrote called Saturday. <laughs> That's an inside joke there. Uh, Lord, have mercy. It's the truth. But this is the truth, and the truth will set you free tonight. God doesn't want us to end up shipwrecked. And if he's rescued us, how often have we cried out, God, help me, get me out of here. And then he got us out of there. And we want to go back to it? Or we want to go back and repeat a similar situation? Are we insane? God have mercy. We, we can't afford to do that. We might not get out of bondage the next time. If the enemy gets full the first time, believe me, he's going to try to whack us the second time. We can't, we can't afford to go back. We have to wait on the Lord. And he'll we'll renew our strength when we do. Amen. And he has the right person. <laughs> and looks, uh, looks fate. Do you know anybody, Lena, who has just been, like, uh, preserved in wax as good-looking <laughs> as they were 20 years ago? Later, I mean, Only some people. Only in the wax museum. Yeah. But what do you got if all, you, all you're all you going for is the looks? What do you got later? God have mercy. Yes. Especially if you hook up with someone who's wicked or cruel or, you know what, not loyal. Or when the goings gets rough, they're not there. Mm -hmm. That's very important. God help us. We're fools if we do it again. Instead of waiting on the Lord. Praise the Lord. What an awesome right now word. No wonder we got hit hard tonight. <laughs> uh, you you brought a right now word that will help many people in many places if you'll receive it out there, people. Amen. God has we, we can go with God's best or Satan's counterfeit. Meant to destroy us and take us down. I, w I literally got to the crossroads one time, Lena. And the, the um, she said, uh, we can be fine. We can stay together, but you cannot be in the ministry anymore. You cannot cast out devils. God have mercy. I know some people, when they were faced with that question, continue for the Lord or forsake ministry for the other, for their spouse, who uh, they were unequally yoked with, that did not care for the Lord. Some of them said, Lord, I'll see you later. And it did not turn out well for them. What are we going to say when we stand before the Lord? I'm not, I'm not talking to people advocating divorce. I'm just merely saying, whatever it is, it gets in the way of the Lord. If we, we say, Lord, I just can't follow you anymore. The cost is too high. What are we going to do? We're going to walk away from the Lord? Fall away? Where are we going to go? It's not worth it. If we have to lose everything, it'll be worth it. If we do what Jesus has asked us to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Lena, how can a person contact you in your ministry to support it and get a hold of you? And uh, do you have any announcements you'd like to make? 
Yes, Brother Shannon, and Lord forgive me, um, I was supposed to do this, so he's reminded me again, and I want to say this now. I am appealing right now to the listeners that are out there, and Brother Shannon, I'm sorry, I'm setting you up. Um, I'm appealing to the listeners and all of us ministers of the gospel that have presented on Omega Man Radio Show. We know that it takes money, finances, to keep us going. Um, if we, like myself, if I went to another radio show, you know, it's not going to be come on the show and do it. You, you've got to pay something for airtime because they're looking at their bottom line and they want to charge you because of the cost. Omega Man, Brother Shannon, you've offered this forum to my ministry. My ministry has re been able to reach an extension where on this side of the world I've not been able to. And I thank you for that. But I'm, I'm extending an invitation to every person that has, whether you have reached out to Omega Man, through Omega Man or through another ministry that you heard on Omega Man. I don't care how, but you have been touched somewhat by Omega Man Radio. I encourage you to give to support. Let us not allow Omega Man Radio to become another statistic. Why is it that everything that's good and of God needs to die? Why does it die? Because we, the children, the people of God, whom God has blessed with the finances for the upkeep of the ministries are not doing what we're doing, what we need to do. We're out there squandering what God has given us. I'm saying to us all, I don't care if it's a dollar. Give what you can to Omega Man Radio. I say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're going to defy the odds and Omega Man Radio shall be a, an eternal thorn in the side of the kingdom of darkness. But it cannot be until we put our money where our mouth is. That means means reach into our pocket and feed the ministry. The Lord placed it on my heart. Every person, every one of us that has come through, and I say the Lord places on my heart because God himself is going to speak to each and every one of us. And he says what we need to give is going to be given cheerfully. He doesn't want us to give stressfully. He understands the needs of every ministry. I fully understand what's going on because the ministry of Lanonita Ministries, we are going through it. But you know what? I keep believing and knowing that God is going to provide. And he still continues to provide. And he's allowed me to be on this show. But I'm saying to us all tonight, this is a season of giving. Don't go and waste a single dollar in the malls. And buy a gift that your kid is going to toss in the trash, step on it, or you're going to trip on it, or some trinket that you don't need. And give to this radio program. And let us, let the purpose, the destiny, and the vision of God for Mega Man Radio, let the flag raise high to say, devil, no retreat, no surrender. We're not raising the white flag. The flag is going to be red. And I say red, not in red of finance where it's negative, but red because it's going to flow like a river. Amen? Thank you so much for that. And I love and appreciate all of you out there. Thank you for your, your emails and kind words. And it's an honor to be here with you all. To bring the men and women of God like Minister Lena Nita that come on and bring the uncompromised word of truth that can set the captives free if we receive it in Jesus name. And so I'm blessed. I'm blessed by tonight's program. And if you're enjoying tonight, we're going to have Lena Nita on again next week. Amen. We've got about 10 minutes on the program. Lena, I'm just going to give the mic back to you. Would you um, take people through some prayer tonight? 
Yes, yes, Brother Shadow. I want to lead us into a corporate prayer. I want to pray. Hallelujah. You know what? Let us make the devil even madder than he was earlier. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want us women, get your shawls, get your head tied, tie your head right now. Men, I want you to go down low in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're all going to get into a place of submission right now. And we're going to ask heaven to open up over us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the fire of God will start to rain down and burn some people out of our lives. Burn out the Delilahs. Let their eyes be gouged out in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we come before your holy, precious throne right now in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Lord, we said we hear and we shall obey in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree that as of this night, mighty God, we shall no longer wallow in the mud with pigs. Mighty God, we are prince and princesses, kings and queens of the most high God. We belong in the palace. Lord God Almighty Jesus, on the arm of the queen needs to be a king. On the arm of the king needs to be a queen. So Lord God Almighty Jesus, we ask Father God that you let it rain down some mighty blood. Rain down the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open up the vein. Hallelujah Jesus. Mighty God and poor Pour out blood, 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 blood. Let it rain blood to wash away. Wash away, Father God, the filthiness of the mind. Wash away the evil desires, mighty God, that has got a chokehold on your people. Wash away the cravings, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, that wants us. Oh, Father God, to crawl into the pit with the enemy. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask God that you pour out your fury this night. Mighty God, because the devil tried to interrupt. He tried, oh, Father God, almighty Jesus, Lord God, to choke your word. But mighty God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you stir up a forest fire. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we serve every demon notice uh, every Delilah on assignment uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth every Philistine of oppression uh, that has been oppressing hallelujah the purpose and destiny in us uh, oh God almighty Jesus uh, we call for the purpose and destiny to rage high mighty God God we have been in the whale's belly for too long it is time for us to be spewed out like Jonah put us back on the track uh, hallelujah Jesus Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mighty God, Lord God, we call now for Jehovah Gibor. Yes, mighty Jehovah Gibor, the one who fights for us. So who can stand against us this night? Mighty God, that the hosts and the legions of angels, yes, the mighty angels, mighty God, mighty God, will come upon this land. Mighty God, invade our homes, invade our airspace, invade our atmosphere, invade invade our rooms. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, come forth, Michael, and the archangels, flaming swords drawn. Hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come forth and wage war. Do battle, 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 battle. Assign angels on the roofs, mighty God, so that no devil, no demon shall escape. Loose them, O oh Father God Almighty Jesus. Upon the grounds, mighty God, set up a sentinel guard. Guard your people this night, mighty God. In the name of Jesus, let them devils howl and scream. Mighty God, mighty God, they will not have a special spectacle tonight. Uh, they shall no longer mighty God. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, oh, Father God, use us, oh, oh God, to be a sport for them. Uh, mighty God, mighty God, because tonight we coming up. Uh, we coming up out of our beds. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus, of fornication. Uh, we're coming up our beds uh, of every sexual perversion and lust. We coming up out of our beds of kisaf, uh, that strong carnal desire. Mighty God, mighty God, Lord God Almighty Jesus, let it rain fire, liquid hot fire, let it be hot, 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 h
redeemer's mighty god uh, shall be reminded uh, what hellfire feels like this night uh, mighty god mighty god uh, send a tsunami the tsunami the wave of your presence uh, move upon your people my god as you move upon the waters uh, mighty god in the beginning uh, and you said let there be we call them forth father let the mighty men of god uh, arise up now uh, let the mighty women of god uh, arise up now uh, take your place take your place uh, come up out of the pit uh, come up out of the grave uh, come up shake off uh, shake off the chains uh, shake the shackles uh, hammer shanda uh, roar like the lion of judah uh, roar and hammer shanda roar in the authority that burns on the inside uh, that burns on the depth of your soul uh, that burns in your spirit uh, that says i can uh, i will defy uh, my past uh, i will defy uh, every plot and plan of the enemy i will make it uh, i will finish my race uh, i will run it mighty god uh, because you lord uh, you go before me you expose mighty god uh, every pit uh, you expose every trap uh, spring every trap my god uh, take our hand this night uh, lead us oh god uh, hallelujah jesus uh, out of darkness uh, yes lord jesus uh, let them know god uh, that the light of man uh, that the light of christ uh, has come to set his people free this night my god uh, many of us have been in oppression uh, god we've been hooked up to the wrong people hooked up to devils and demons uh, hooked up oh god almighty uh, to jezebel delilah's uh, hooked up oh god almighty to ahab uh, hooked up oh god uh, where you have not hooked us up uh, we've been latched on uh, father god they've been feeding on our souls uh, but mighty god uh, lord jesus uh, let your vein uh, hallelujah jesus uh, burst forth with the blood uh, fill our lungs uh, fill us oh god uh, fill our blood with your blood uh, the blood that will reject uh, reject 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 we say devil no more uh, we know who we are this night uh, we are called for greatness uh, and we will achieve the greatness uh, because uh, greater is he that's in us uh, than anything devil uh, any Jezebel, uh, any devil uh, come away because our god promise uh, that if we stand uh, yes lord jesus uh, stand in the might uh, stand in the power stand to see the salvation uh, of our god uh, we shall yet be saved yes lord god almighty jesus uh, so let it be done so let it be done oh god in the name of jesus oh god i speak oh god almighty jesus that the fire of god consume our minds mighty god mighty god oh god father purge out burn out oh god those lustful desires those train wrecking desires mighty god mighty god those destiny wrecking desires mighty god mighty god burn out purge out loose your fire mighty god pour out uh, oh god almighty jesus uh, god burn out uh, those ungodly ties uh, we've been connected uh, to demons uh, we've been married uh, to demons we've been hooked up to demons we've been shocked up to demons uh, mighty god mighty god we've been placed in a jail cell uh, with demons uh, and we say no more tonight uh, tonight god uh, we demand to be free tonight oh god we have heard your word tonight oh god we turn our eyes to you tonight oh god we turn our thoughts to you tonight oh god we say yes yes to purpose yes to destiny yes to your way yes to your choice what you want god we want jesus no more our way we don't want to be led anymore but our own selves father because god we will surely fail we choose you tonight so we say devil pack up get out of our beds and remember my brothers and sisters when they get out change the sheets burn it don't sleep on it no more i'm a shanda hokoraba shanda purge your house purge your life oh god almighty jesus purge your closet oh god tell him no lose your number forget my name forget my address you're not welcome no more tell him out give him an eviction notice let him know that this time i may not have meant it before 
before because I didn't know better. But this time, there was something about the word tonight that God spoke to me, spoke to my heart. And tonight, something took root. Something says defy, defy, defy. And I stand on that root. The root that flows from my God. The rock. I stand on his foundation. And I refuse to be moved. Refuse to be derailed. Refuse to be run off the track. I say yes. To Jesus. No more devils in my life. No more. I divorce you out of my bed, out of my mind, out of my heart, out of my life, out of my soul, out of my spirit. Take back everything you gave me. I don't need it because my God can provide for me. Take back that lousy ring. Take it back. Take it back. I don't need your love letters no more. Take it back. Take it back. I don't need those text messages no more. Take it back. Take it back. I don't need to hear those lies no more. Take it back. Take it back. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. I can't hear you no more, devil. I'm running. And I ain't stopping. And my destination is to see my Jesus. Get up. Get out of my house. Get up. Get out of my house. This body belongs now to the Lord. Lord Jesus, come and occupy. Occupy. Lord God Almighty Jesus, the abundance within your son. Come and occupy the abundance within your daughter. Occupy us, Lord, tonight. Lord God Almighty Jesus, come and in. Take control. Take over. Mighty God, let this devil know we mean business. We're no longer like we used to be. Tonight, we stand in purpose with our eyes fixed on the cross, with our eyes fixed on the prize to see your face. And to hear, you resisted unto blood coming in, coming in to my joy and to know that it was all for you, Lord. It was not a journey in vain. But a journey that brought eternal, everlasting joy and a love that we felt tonight like no other night. Thank God, you loved us so much that you came and you whispered to our ears, you whispered to our heart, and you said, come, follow me. I show you the way home. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us from the bad man, the bad woman. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't forget about us. And tonight, Lord, we stand up in our freedom. And we give you thanks. We say thank you. Abba Father, for your love. Thank you, Abba Father, for reminding us who we are, why we are here. Thank you, Lord, for our assignment to make your name great upon this earth. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your peace now. That we chose and we chose right. We chose you. I thank you, Lord, even for myself. That to the eyes of others I chose wrong, but I chose right. I chose right because here I am to testify to my brothers and sisters that you know what's best. You know what's best for us. You know all that we need. And you promise to meet every need. We just have to trust you. And I thank you. That you help me to trust you. And as you help me, I know you'll help my brothers and sisters to trust you. Even in this, it has fell many of us, Lord. Many great men and women have fallen. But Lord, all those out there listening this night, a mighty great army has risen up to stand against the spirit that seduces and woos and distracts and destroys destiny and purpose. Tonight, Lord, we stand to agree as Samson's mother agreed. We stand nameless to say, Lord, we accept, Father God, Lord, to do all that you say to do so that we can bring forth the ministry of promise. That Lord God Almighty Jesus, the ministry of promise that we are carrying in our wombs tonight, mighty God, we shall bring forth. Oh, God, a ministry separated unto you. Mighty God, a peculiar ministry unlike none other. God, where you are at the head, you are at the helm. You, Father God, direct all about our ministry. You tell us what to eat. You tell us how to live, how to be. And we say yes, even as Samson's nameless mother said yes. We stand amongst the nameless to say yes. Yes, mighty God. We say yes, Jesus. We say yes. Yes. Yes, we will live as a Nazarite separated in all that we do oh god steady steady in peace in the name of jesus I thank you oh god that tonight many of us shall sleep the sweet sleep of peace no longer tormented no longer conflicted in our hearts and in our minds as to what to do, because you made it plain, as we say yes, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord everybody, if you're just coming in, we're going to have this up in the archive tomorrow. This is something everybody needs to listen to. And send it to everyone you know. Someone didn't like the uh, photograph that I put up on my Facebook of someone in the fishnet stockings. But folks, this is the way people dress where I live. And this is the way people are dressing on Facebook. And there many people are telegraphing uh, what they're going through out there, guys and gals. Many of them are right there at the crossroads tonight of this program. The devil has intended to take them out. He set an ambushment. Sin is fun for a season, Sister Lena. I learned that. But 
the payback is hell <laughs> if we don't <laughs> repent. And you know, some people didn't make it. They're not here tonight. Enemy took them out, took them into an eternity, entrapped them, and took their souls. And that's the, the that's the reason for this this program tonight. To pluck people out of the fire. Who the enemy right now is taking you down that path or wants to, or maybe you were considering it. Don't do it. It could be your destruction. Not everybody escapes. Most don't. But if you're here tonight, it's for a reason. And this program will bless many people. I encourage you to send it to everybody you know. Because this is many people's story tonight, Lena. Or it will yes, be their brother. story. And if, you know what? Um, the Lord spoke to me that many will be offended by the word and what's going to come forth. But he says, they're just making noise. Because the ones that are to listen, that have, that this message is for, they will hear. You know what? I got to say this. It is about time that we see things as they really are. It is for too long. I was having just this conversation today with a fellow evangelist. And, you know, uh, the, the words that somebody was used to ministering, they said, why why they use that? I said, sounds like a strong word, isn't it? But I said, that's what's out there. The church has for too long covered up sin and call it patty cake. They have put it in an oven and baked it and served it to us and on the outside, it's beautiful. Inside, mucky. Guess what? The Lord is saying, enough. I'm showing you on the outside that it's ugly. And on the inside, it's ugly. Showing you the demon coming in your bed. It is not a beautiful woman. It's an ugly serpent. And it is time for us to accept the truth. You may not like the truth. And it's okay to have your opinion. I refuse. After the torment that I went through, what the Lord put me through this week, to take back one single word. And good that it ruffled your feathers. And good that those pictures got underneath your skin. Because you know what? That's what men and women of God are looking at. And the Lord is saying, that is your Delilah. That's the lap you're lying in. And that's what's going to gouge your eyes out. Look at it for the very last time. And be set free. Bring it on. Praise the Lord. Jesus came to set the captives free. And you can be set free tonight. You don't have to go into that, those chains of bondage. You don't have to be strapped to the millstone. Have your eyes gouged out. Guys and gals. It was fun being in the Oasis for a while, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> you watched the Samson Delilah movie? Yeah, they had they had a party out there in the Oasis. Out there with the palm trees, the tents, great food, candlelight. But the end's death. It's a road to hell. And that's where the enemy's taking many people out there right now. We know some, some great women, of, some great uh, young ladies, and uh, great young men that um, are considered relationships with someone who's not even saved because they're good looking, thinking that somehow they're going to win them to the Lord afterwards. Ha! Huh. That is a setup. That's a setup. So Their they're on missionary. will continue to be to the enemy, my brother. Oh, yeah. And then if you get pregnant, girls, with a guy who doesn't love the Lord, he's not going to take you and your children to church. Or guys, you're with a good-looking lady who doesn't love the Lord. You marry one of the Philistines. Pull you away from the faith. Pull away from the call of God that he has on your life. This destroys the destiny of uh, men and women of God. It happened before. The story was not made up. It actually happened, just like the Bible said, and it's happening today, just about every day across the land. That's the whole point here. This is a wake-up call to say, think twice. The Word of God is clear. Don't be unequal yoked with an unbeliever, and you don't want to go back into that yoke of bondage if you've escaped it the first time. Amen? 
Amen. Wait, wait on the Lord. That's the best way. <laughs> Amen. You know what, Brother Shannon, and just um, many times we have this belief that our destiny will always come to pass. Samson's destiny as a judge to lead. Okay? What happened? He lost his sight. Did he do his work? Yes. But I do not believe he fulfilled it all. He died with them. He didn't die a glorious death. Let us remember what happened to Aaron. Aaron was with Moses, saw all the signs and wonders. And as soon as Moses' back was turned, he joined in with the people. And let me remind us, the word of God says, the Lord told Moses to take him to the mountain and strip him. And strip him and give his clothing to his son. He was stripped of his mantle and he never got to see the promised land. Talk about a train wreck. Don't think that because you are a man of God with a great calling that you can do whatever you want to do and it will still come to pass. Look at Eli. His household was called to be priest. It was given to a child. Given to a child. Let us be wise. Let us not get ourselves caught up in squabbles and pointing fingers at the pictures and whatever it is. Let the word of God judge. If you want to throw a dagger, don't throw it at the pictures. Throw it at the word of God. If the word of God has done its job, then check yourself. What am I fussing about? The same way the enemy 90 seconds. seduced Samson. He can do the same to you. And he did try to do it to me and to Brother Shannon as we openly confessed. No holes barred here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to um, say God bless you, Lena, for bringing the word of the Lord with that compromise right now. We're another home seconds. run for Jesus. I'm really enjoying these because there's, there's truth to set the captives free every single time she's coming on. I want to encourage you also get a copy of the last several shows that Lena's done. Awesome stuff. And thank you, Jesus. And we're going to have her back on again next week, same time. Um, Lena, before we close, and uh, folks, coming up next, God's Warrior Women, final program of the week. Uh, Lena, I want you to tell people, once again, how they can make contact with you and your ministry. Um, they can support it. And um, any other announcements you would like to make about it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Shannon. I want to thank everyone out there. I love you all. You know, I love you, love you, love you, love you. Um, for those of you who um, the Lord has placed in your heart to reach out to me or even to sow a seed in the ministry, seconds. you can contact me on my website, which is Lena, L A N A, Nita.com, or through Facebook, Evangelist Lena Dunn, Nita, or um, through my Twitter, which is at preach gospel ww or through instagram pound preach gospel ww or on linkedin by my name um lena nita or you can reach me on email which is preach gospel ww at aol.com or on my cell phone and i say be patient with me please i'm overwhelmed bogged down but i will get to each and every one of you uh, my phone number is 407-212-2523 and be prepared that when you get a call back from me that we are about cutting heads off and you know, setting, up, setting, setting you free and so that we can both walk out and say glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Father God, bless the hearer tonight. Bless Sister Lena. Expand her ministry and her tent pegs and territory in the name of Jesus. Give her every provision that she needs, Lord. Thank you for the your servant tonight. Brought the right now word of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Shannon. God bless you. We'll see you soon, Lena. God bless you. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to set up for God's warrior women. Let me tell you where we're going to be. We're over at uh, area code 323-784-9622. 323-784-9622. Uh, that's channel two. Let me go ahead and dial in over there, and uh, we'll get rolling. Hope you all are doing great tonight. We've had just awesome stuff all week long. Praise God for the men and women of God that come on, serve the Lord, bring in the word of the Lord here on this uh, broadcast platform. Thank you, Jesus. And let's go to uh, channel two. Here we go. I'm setting it up. We're going to have open lines, this program, if you need prayer tonight. Stand by. I'm going to dial in a different way. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please enter your host. To start your show now. Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Here we go. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Blog Talk Radio. Everybody, let's see if my... Um... Oh, no, that's not going to work. I have to do it manually. Okay. Stand by. I'm going to take and um, save Mixelar just for a second. And we're going to um, crank it back up fresh. That way we don't lose our program that we just did. Okay, I'm down on the ladies. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hello. Let's do a sound check. Um, Sister Bell, how are you doing? Yes. I'm good. How are you? Praise the Lord. I'm doing good. Sister Rita? Yes, this is Rita. All right. Got Rita. We got Bell. Okay. You've got Heather. Hello. Heather. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Uh, sh Jacqueline is in the same room as me um, oh. because just with one mic because yeah. it's just too difficult having to split in those bad connection. No worries. And, uh, my, my sons have the other laptop, so it's like... I want to oh. make sure we get all of you. I've got Rita, we got you and Jackie, Cindy, yes. Heather, yes. Yes. Val. Did we get everybody? Oh, yep. Okay, good. I want to make sure I have everybody. Well, with that, shall we start it up? Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Here we go, folks. Yeah. Do it. We're up. Oh, you know what I've got to do is set up YouTube real quick. Okay, we're, we're, uh, we've are we got right. Blog Talk up. Here we go. 